Grass Merino Stud celebrated its 40th birthday with a field day this month, focused on sheep handling for profit. Guest presenters spoke on sheepyard design, electronic ear tags and smartphone apps, while a farmer's forum allowed guests an insight into fellow producers' own operations. So there's still lots of reasons to be in sheep, but if you're going to be in them, uh, you've got to improve the technology. And hence today, uh, a theme of uh, improving sheep handling in every possible way. Um, if you think of the technologies that have come into cropping, uh, they are impressive, but there's some also some very impressive technologies now in sheep to make them more profitable for you. So, so what will make sheep work quicker, easier and safer? Well, it's, it's giving your, your sheep work an infrastructure of priority. That's what you've got to do. You're there for 30 and 40 years, uh, so you know, make it easy. Uh, don't, don't make it a chore. Uh, and what we do is, our, we, we believe our yards are last uh, 40 or 50 years, and like I built my yards on my place, you know, that, over 30 years ago, and they're just like new. And most yards and in Western Australia, I did a lot of work in Western Australia, and Western Australia, they had a boom time, must have been 40 or 50 years ago, but they had a boom time, and they, uh, and I used, there were two companies in particular, uh, Mills and Hassel and uh, Cyclone, they sold yards everywhere. Knew everybody, or anybody could afford them. They built these yards. So there's nothing wrong with the panels. So we're not talking about the companies. We're talking about the, the, uh, uh, the all the panels are generally quite good still, even after 40 years. Uh, and but they've never worked for 40 years. I mean, they've owned them, but they've never worked. And it's just it's more the design. So what we do is we measure every panel, rip them all out of the ground. And sometimes they weld new legs on. And then, then uh, we we put our design in, so not the, uh, and then we just and then they just run. And they say we put up with these yards for 30 or 40 years. We're still using the same panels, still the same panels, but they're in a new structure, a new design. And so that's what we try to work on. Is we we work on the design. That that's our speciality. Uh, we go out on property. We use uh, a robotic theodolite like over over here and there's been a lot of people there's a lot of people in this room that have got our yards we go uh we've had the robotic field light for maybe 12 years maybe it measures everything that's there at the present and uh and then then we go back and then we do the design we spend a long time doing the design and it's all based on sheep believing that they're winning and it's not about us it's about the sheep and the sheep are all going to think that they're winning and, and there's, there's ways that they're a lot smarter uh, than people, well, I think most, most people here probably understand how clever they are. Uh, but, you know, like why would a sheep want to run at noise? Why would it want to run at a wall? Why, why you know, so, and so we position the yards, uh, so, that, well, anyway, we've got our own technique of how to let the sheep think that they're winning. Some are really good and some are rubbish. No other word for it, they're just rubbish. So I think you have to spend a little bit of time reading them, look at the reviews a little bit. But there's quite a few things that look at, at things such as farm management programs, which do recording of data that you might find useful, paddock information, fertiliser history, pasture growth. There's a fly assist app, which is probably um, quite relevant for a lot of people in terms of managing their fly issues. Through to other types of things such as specific programs like Livestock Manager uh, that looks at, at um, fat scores and condition scores as well as paddock movements with holding periods, a range of other things that you might want to do in the paddock rather than having to transfer the flavour on. The first couple of things that I'd leave you with, as I said, check, check the ratings and reviews. Give it your own, I guess, sceptical test. The first one is, am I going to use this? Is it going to give me the information I want? If it's not going to give you any information, then why download it? So think a bit about what you actually want to achieve in terms of your farm management before you start to, uh, to, to purchase or download that app. The next one is, how big is the app? Some of these applications run off quite a lot of data, and the size of them tends to be quite big. 
So you can't actually download it off the, off the telephone network, the 4G network. You have to download it from a wireless network at home. So that might mean that you've either got to be connected to the internet on your computer and plug your Apple iPad or your tablet into your, into your computer to download that. Now, that could just be a pain in the neck. Quite seriously, it could be a pain in the neck. Or it might be fine. Maybe at home you have a wireless network set up in your house so that you can wander around the house um, computing. I don't know how your system is set up. But think about that. Apps are continually being updated. So don't use an app that's out of date. If you get the little notifications that say update your settings, which I have this discussion with my wife quite a lot, so you're supposed to update them because they, they change the way they operate. So things do change and they'll fluctuate a little bit. So just be prepared for a few changes. Whether you run sheep or whether you are uh, running cattle or cropping or any other agricultural business, you're really in the business of making good timely decisions and that's probably where I'd like to come from at the moment.